The burden of infectious diseases on the African continent continues to have a devastating effect on all components of human development. Uganda was one of the first countries in sub-Saharan Africa to report the spread of HIV. The first case of slim disease was identified in 1982 in Rakai district. It was the beginning of an epidemic spanning more than 30 years. Uganda and other African countries were really going through a difficult period because of HIV and AIDS. A lot of young people uh, were really dying in the prime of their lives before they even began to start on life's journey. And I recall being on Ward 4B in Mulago and seeing many young people just very sick and many of them die. The inauguration of the Institute was really to respond to this, especially in the context where new treatments that were giving hope were coming on the market. There was no capacity to deliver this treatment in Africa, so the Institute was put in place to begin to be able to do that. So IDEA was set up by a group of um, academics from North America and, and Uganda, mostly from Makerere. Uh, with funding from, from Pfizer, uh, the pharmaceutical company. HIV AIDS was our first focal area and um, the San Francisco AIDS Foundation was um, very active in the US in this area. The San Francisco AIDS Foundation which sent people here to design and start up the programs. The ownership of the institute was transferred to Macquarie University in 2004. After the formation of the College of Sciences in 2009, IDI became an integral part of the university's School of Medicine while retaining its status as a not-for-profit organization. The first step probably was to set up some infrastructure, even as the programs were designed and set up our first building was set up around that time uh, in Molago and which housed the clinic and the training programs which were the two initial programs. The Institute has six core program areas. We have a Center of Excellence in Molago. That Center of Excellence uh, cares for about 8,000 people. It has experts in clinical management of infectious diseases, so that's one facet. Uh, we train, so we have a fully-fledged training program where we equip healthcare workers with skills. We have a research program that focuses on African scholarship. To make sure that we have African scientists who not only are just implementing ideas from our Western collaborators, but they're able to conceive and uh, implement original work that uh, has been done here in Africa. In order to address the increased need for direct delivery of comprehensive HIV services, the Health System Strengthening Program, formerly known as Outreach Program, was set up. It's the department or program that takes our work outside of the IDI headquarters and offices and goes out to work with establishments uh, in the communities, in the districts, in the municipalities where we work to bring services closer to where people are and work through our models of system strengthening to improve uh, the lives of the people and the systems that we use to make services better. With the rise of new challenges, including emerging infectious diseases, there was a need to expand IDI's scope of work and support beyond HIV and AIDS. This led to the birth of the Global Security Program in 2018. So the Global Health Security Program um, was established to support the government of Uganda to prevent, detect and respond to infectious disease threats and outbreaks. A lot of the work we've done has um, really been around capacity building um, to support government teams to respond to a large outbreak. 
um, but a lot of the other work we've been doing alongside has included things around policies and regulations that countries have. There's also work to continue the government of Uganda to track what is known as a national action plan for health security. Uh, so the ministries and departments that are relevant for health security identify gaps, but then make plans to close those gaps. And so we help to provide that support to see that all the gaps are closed so that um, the country is safer and more secure. IDI acquired a modern laboratory which is certified by the College of American Pathologists. It provides high quality, internationally accredited services, including an important quality assurance role for Ugandan service providers and researchers. IDI has established a partnership with the Uganda Ministry of Health and the pharmaceutical private sector. This was done through the Academy for Health Innovation, which has become a platform to develop and evaluate wide-ranging innovations for rollout through IDI and government programs. The importance of having an innovations hub within IDI is that um, it allows uh, creative thinking about problems that may be arising across other programs but that cannot be addressed with the traditional funding pathways. So the Academy had, with its seed funding from Janssen, has been able to build some innovative products and services that are now being deployed within IDI programs, mainly health system strengthening, but also within the research department, that are enhancing the programs that are offered in the rest of IDI. Over the past 20 years, IDI has evolved to become one of the leading implementing partners for PEPFAR and the US CDC. So in IDI, you, it's unique in a way that you have researchers, you have frontline healthcare workers in Kampala in our advanced clinic. And then you have the experiences that come through our staff who are based in the rural. So when you combine all that, I don't see any other institution which is privileged to be able to, to work in that interconnected nature whereby each department feeds into each other. All these programs are supported by other departments including finance, information systems, human resources and more. IDI currently provides specialized services in support of the Ministry of Health and other partners nationwide in over 52 districts. Current support for HIV care and treatment for 270,000 people living with HIV is ongoing in 14 districts including Kampala and the West Nile region. I think what we're most proud of is our contribution towards HIV epidemic control. So we want to have an HIV free generation and the Institute through our six programs has really uh, contributed to this. Some of this is through things like medical male circumcision, putting uh, individuals on ART, and also doing a lot of HIV prevention research. Um, what I can say is that the Institute is responsible for between 20 and 25 percent of the oversight for national uh, HIV care. So I think that's a solid contribution. With the opportunity that we got from USID, we were able to roll out this uh, USID programmatic uh, accelerated control of TB in Karamoja. We went into the region lived with the people, the district leaders, trying to understand the issues in the, that region. The TSR for Karamoja across all districts, south and north, they have changed. We have green Kabong achieved 95% in two years of our being there and working with the partners at the districts. So it's something that the national program acknowledges, the partners, and the stakeholders know that there has been major impact on these USID resources for Karamoja. First of all, I thank God for myself. I was sick, my husband was sick, 
we were staying in the Kamwacha at my sister's place. When we came here, my husband was the first to be tested. After some hours, they also tested me. We both. They told me, Nyaburu, we are going to put you on drugs. Then I say, I'm ready to swallow because I need life. I'm happy with this service of IBI. I wouldn't finish all these years. They were handling me like a glass here and no in any other hospital which they can do this, what they are doing here for us. Our prevention care and treatment clinic has evolved to support clients requiring more specialized services, including second line and salvage therapies. It meets the needs of particular groups like sex workers, pregnant HIV-positive mothers, and patients with hepatitis B and HIV core infection. This has provided opportunities for specialized research. So IDI is part of the Makere community, and there are specific things that we are very proud of in that respect. One is that through our research, we've improved the ranking of the university through our peer-reviewed scientific publications. Uh, recently, we had a publication in the number one clinical journal, the New England Journal of Medicine, based on the work we did in the Nadia study, as an example. We've also contributed to the growth of faculty at the university through our scholars program. So the contribution of IDI is quite tremendous, and we are very proud of the IDI as our leading institution in research and outreach programs as far as infectious diseases are concerned. We therefore take much pride in what they are doing and would like to wish them all the best as we celebrate 20 years. There are many people who actually have been uh, trained in IDI or passed through IDI as scholars that now are actually uh, in uh, important uh, leadership positions and in, both internally and externally. Even our um, executive director uh, passed through the research department. He was actually the previous head of research. Uh, I can talk about myself. I started very, as a very junior person at IDI and I grew up inside the department. But very many actually scientists, uh, head of departments, uh, um, professors in Makarere, they actually at some point been trained within IDI. IDI has the opportunity to take everything we've learned over the last 20 years and see how these lessons are relevant to the rest of Africa. So I call that the move to the regions and I'm excited to say that we're already uh, experiencing that move through one of our key grants with the Africa CDC. That grant is about um, COVID-19 vaccination and how we can scale it up. So IDI is working already in five regions of Africa to uh, monitor how that scale-up is happening. I believe the lessons we learn from this project will enable us to establish partnerships that will take us to West Africa, Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, and other parts of Africa.